Day 6 of Rolling Girls was relatively straightforward, but still offers some interesting headlines and developments. First is Serena Williams' path opening up even more with the exit of third seed Arna Sabalenka. Sabalenka fell to 31st seed Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova, 6-4, 2-6-6-love. Even though in my tournament preview I had Sabalenka winning this one and advancing to the finals, I knew that Pavlyuchenkova was always a tough out, especially at this stage in slams. These two played a few weeks ago in Madrid where Arna won handily 6-2-6-3, which is why I gave the edge to the Belarusian here. Also, I thought that her getting by that tough opener against Ana Kanjo would give her the confidence necessary to make a deep run. Arna's game here was very much hit or miss, and the stats tell the entire story. In the first set, which she lost tightly 6-4, she had a minus 2 winner on forced air differential. However, in the second, where she took 6-2, she hit 19 winners to just 4 on forced errors. Then though in the third where she was bageled, she posted a dismal minus 11 differential. There was a chance for an all Belarusian showdown, but Victoria Azarenka will be flying the flag alone as she beat Madison Keys today 6-2, 6-2. Azarenka looks very solid, but to many, Arna was seen as the big threat for Serena in the quarterfinal matchup. Focusing more on Serena, she earned a very solid win today over compatriot Danielle Collins, winning 6-4, 6-4. I was very impressed by Serena's play today. I think that this was her best match of the tournament thus far. She served well for the most part, serving 59% of first serves in, and she won 80% of those first serve points. She also had a good winner to unforced error ratio, 22 to 20, and was fairly opportunistic when having break points. However, the most impressive part of the match for me was Serena's clutchness. In the opening set, she had a set point at 5-3, but couldn't convert. Then when she served for it, she had two double faults in a row to open the game. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to lose this set 7-5. However, she didn't panic at all and played four excellent points in a row to close it out. In the second set, she grabbed an early break, but soon afterwards, the wheel started falling off and she dropped four consecutive games. Now, down 1-4, a third set was almost certain for Serena, but at 15 all in the sixth game, she pumped herself up and yelled come on move your feet and that right there proved to be the turning point of the match she fell back into that patiently aggressive game style and really took Collins to the woodshed however once again when serving for it at 5-4 she went down love 30 and I started panicking again however she once again shut me up and won four straight points to close off the match now, a lot of people have been saying that Serena has a pretty favorable and even easy path to the finals with Sabalenka out. Serena talked about this a bit in her presser. Um, there's still a lot of matches, you know, a lot of great players as we can see. There's so much depth in this game now. Um, it doesn't matter if you're playing in the first round or, or not. It, um, <laughs> it is really, you really have to fight for every match and nothing comes easy. Now also, as I said once again, Azarenka looms, as does Paula Badosa, who is even more dangerous after narrowly getting by Anna Bogdan 2-6-7-6-6-4. Going off on a bit of a tangent, this was by far the best women's match of the day and possibly the tournament thus far. Anna shocked me with how well she played and was honestly a deserving victor as well. However, you just had a feeling that Badosa wasn't going to go down without a fight and that's what happened. Also, Paula is actually the odds maker's second favorite to win the title following Sabalenka's exit, and first is Iga Svantec. Badosa next faces 2019 finalist Marketa Vondrosova, who took out Polona Hercock 6-3-6-3. Then in Andreescu's section, which has no seats remaining, Tamara Jadenset recovered from a rough opening set to send Katarina Sinyakova home in three. She next gets Serana Kirste, who's been on fire all clay season, most recently dominating Kasakina 3-2. Now talking about Serena's round of 16 opponent Elena Rabakina, she defeated Elena Vesnina 6-1-6-4. Rabakina, if you remembered, had that excellent start to the 2020 season, reaching four finals in the first two months of that year. However, the shutdown did halt her progress, but it seems like since Madrid she's been trending in the right direction. When speaking about playing Serena, the Kazakhstanian said, she's a legend of the sport. Of course I want to be with her on court to feel this power and everything. I was watching her matches when I I was growing up and it would be nice to play with Serena, why not? Now if Rabakina comes out and plays her game, this could be a very challenging match for Serena, especially with her saying that she wants to fill Williams' power and everything. 
However, I think that the 7 seed will prevail in this one. Looking at the men's action, it was honestly very boring, with the exception of one match, Kasper Ruud and Alejandro Davidovic Fakina. There is just so much drama here from underarm serves on break points to a plethora of save match points. Ultimately though, Falkina prevailed, knocking out the 15th seed 7-6, love 6 7 5. I think this was a huge missed opportunity for Casper to make his first major quarter or even semifinals as he would have next got unseated Del Bonus. The Argentine himself doesn't have a lot of experience on the big stages, this being his first appearance at a major second week. However, I think that he'll be a slight favorite against Falkina because for one, he played extremely well against Falnini, crushing him 4-1-3. Also, Alejandro might be spent now playing two consecutive five-set matches. In that same Del Bonus Falcon section is Alexander Zverev, who defeated Laszlo Jerry 6-2-7-5-6-2. Up next, he meets Kei Nishikori for the third time in the span of a month, the Japanese man getting a walkover through Henry Loxanen after winning the first set. This should be an intriguing one, because although Alex dominated K in Madrid, Nishikori was close to getting revenge at Rome. K seems to be enjoying the conditions in Paris so far, but I think that Zverev is trending in the right direction after that tricky opener against Ate, thus I'd give the edge to him. Stefano Tsitsipas got by big serving American John Isner in 4 after dropping the opening set. This match was a solid one, and Isner really used his serve to his advantage in that first, not allowing the Greek men any looks at breaking. However, Steph started to get more accustomed to the Isner serve and ultimately broke the 36 year old down, winning 5 7, 6 3 7, 6 6 1. Steph now plays Pablo Crenio Busta in the fourth round. Second seed Daniel Medvedev also advanced past the big serving American and Riley Opelka, winning 6-4, 6-2, 6-4. I said this in one of my previous videos, but Daniel has exceeded my expectations and is playing really great this tournament. His next match against Garin is definitely winnable, as the Chilean has been shaky a bit in his three matches thus far. Don't get me wrong, it still won't be easy for Daniil, but I'd actually give him a slight advantage here. Tsitsipas and Medvedev are projected to play in the quarterfinals, and as Jim Courier stated, Stefanos would likely want the Chilean to win, as Medvedev has won their 6 of 7 matches. Focusing on the present though, Day 7 has some great women's matches everywhere, with Svitolina Krejcikova and Svantec Kontavai on Chartrer. Djokovic and Federer are there too. On Longland, we have the clash of the Americans, Kennan and Pagula, then Goff Brady. Nadal is also there playing Cam Nori. Then on Simone at 2, Sloane Stevens meets Carolina Mujova, while Sakri and Merton score off. Carlos Alcaraz and Matteo Berrettini headline the men's action there. Before I end this video, I want to briefly discuss the grass season as we have some early withdrawals. First, Dan Wawrinka is out of Wimbledon due to ongoing foot issues which required surgery back in March. Also, American Taylor Fritz revealed that he underwent surgery for a torn meniscus he sustained during match point in his second round match. Fritz hopes to be back for Wimbledon and feels that he'll be 100% for the US hardcourt swing. Then lastly, Naomi Osaka has pulled out of her first scheduled grass event in Berlin which starts on June 14th. Apparently, she's still on the Wimbledon entry list, but is back home in Los Angeles at the moment. That's it for today, and let me know your thoughts about Serena's favorable draw and the other action in the comment section below. Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.